Hey guys, I'm Angela and welcome back to Hobby Night. This week I have a special treat for you as I'll be painting up my first ever bust. An orc pirate captain I was sent by Cromlech and we're going to be using the slap chop method on this boy. Let's go ahead and get to it. Now before we begin, this doesn't quite fit exactly right so... Oh! Excellent! Alright, now we have a bust to talk about, specifically the one that Cromlech sent me that came in this delightful wooden box, which I just needed to point out and thought was really cute. I'm going to be keeping this forever. I don't know what I'm putting in it. Probably dice. I'll probably be putting dice in this or coins because it's piratey. All right, but we need to talk about this bust that I'm going to be painting up because one, I think it's stunning, but I want to talk a little bit about my priming method because we're doing something a bit differently that maybe you've seen me do before, but we have a new name for it now and it's called Slap Chop. Slap Chop is an undercoating method where you start with a darker primer and then work your way up to a brighter primer and then you put contrast paint or inks or whatever thin painting material you want to directly over top and you're good to go. It looks amazing and we're going to be using it today, although I am going to be doing a little bit of a variation on it, something that I think will just work for my purposes a little bit better. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get to priming our bust. As I mentioned, I'm going to be using the slap chop method on this particular model, so let's go ahead and get started on that. First and foremost, I need to prime the model up using a gray primer, and for this I'm just going with Uniform Gray from the Army Painter. After doing a small amount of touch-up on some areas that were in the putty as I was priming things, we can move on to the actual rest of this method, and that is first going to include some Nuln Oil. I want to put this into the recesses so that I get a little bit of a deeper shadow than what the gray is providing me, but I didn't want to go with a full black because I've used black with contrast paint before, and even though there's only going to be a very small amount of it left, it still washes out a lot more of the color than I am looking for. So I figured the Nuln Oil would be a great complement that would sort of fit that vibe. After the Nuln Oil has had plenty of time to dry, we're going to move on to the dry brushing part of this method. And the first color that I'm going to be using is Auric Flesh. Now you can use whatever mid-tone color that you want to, but I went with Auric Flesh because it's a green and I'm working on an orc. So I figured it would work really well. It's still lighter than my gray, but not too much lighter. And it works as a perfect mid-tone. I am loving the way that this is turning out so far. Like, I actually just really like the way this by itself looks with the gray and the green. Obviously, we're going to add one more layer of dry brushing with a white on top of it all. But I just wanted to take some time to appreciate, honestly, one of the textures that they have going on on this model. Cromlech did a great job. I love the details. Like, I was looking as I was bringing this first dry brush pass over, like, out like how much is actually going on on this um, like shoulder Epaulet. piece here. Epaulette, thank you. I couldn't remember the name of it. Um, I love these buttons. There are some great little orky oh, skeleton. Little yeah, they're little orky faces that look kind of sort of skullish, but like, That's I, I love it. Um, I, of course, I mean, the cog's big and noticeable, so I saw that before, but again, really just loving all of the details. I even like the little rivets of different sizes on the shoulder here. That's a nice detail. Yeah, and then I actually really enjoy the little bit of texture work that's happening on this squig here. Um, I did have to do a little bit of repair work originally on this tail. I'm going to go ahead and get to adding the white to this. And then after that, we can actually start applying our contrast colors. Once we're done with this and I've gone pretty heavy with the green, we're going to move on to our highlight color, which is going to be matte white. I'm going to go pretty heavy on this as well because I really want these highlights to shine through and stand out prominently against everything else we've already done. Once the white is done, we can actually start slapping on some color. Just look at how stunning even the Slap Chop Prime job looks on this bust. It is insane and I love it, but we want to put some color on here. So let's start with some of the bigger sections first. We're going to start with Mantis Warrior Green on his flesh. I love this color tone. It's my go-to for orc flesh, and you can immediately see the effects of the Slap Chop Priming Method with this color. It stands out beautifully. You get a nice undertone of yellow from it. You still get some deep greens and it's absolutely stunning. We're putting this on his belly, his face, and his hand, anywhere we see some of that orky flesh. 
After that, we're going to get started on his Imperial looted jacket that he has. I decided that this time, instead of going with a Blood Angels red Imperial looted jacket, we're going to go with something a bit blue, but I wanted it to look a little bit faded, like it wasn't a true navy blue color tone anymore. It had gotten sun bleached and maybe weather worn because he's out on the open seas. So I went with Croxagore scale. This is a lovely blue teal color tone that is absolutely stunning. And I love the combination of this color with his flesh immediately. It just looks beautiful. But the other big section that I want to take care of before we move on to some more of the detail work and the squig in his face and that kind of thing is Basilicanum Gray. I'm putting this only on his sword because I want it to stand out distinctly as the only stone element of the model. Anything else that's going to be a metallic gray will do something different for later. And with that, we have some of the bigger sections covered. Now let's work on the details. Hey guys, I just wanted to jump in and let you know that I've recently started live streaming. So if you never want to miss those, or if you've been enjoying the content you're watching today, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications. Now let's go ahead and jump back to the video. The first of the details that I want to work on is his glorious face. I have debated for a while what I wanted to do specifically on his beard. And I came to the conclusion that it was going to be multi-toned, but not just two-toned it's going to be tri-toned. The first color I need to put down is Black Templar. This is going to be the majority of the beard's color tone, and we're going to put this on everything with the exception of four distinct braids. One of those braids that we have not painted is going to be painted in Griff Hound Orange. I debated between doing a black beard theme or a red beard theme because those are classic pirate looks and decided, you know what, we're gonna go with both and we're gonna make it a little bit Halloween by adding a third color in. So once we have the orange on that one braid, we're going to come back in with Soul Blight White, or soul blight gray, I guess it's called, and put that on the remaining three unpainted braids. This gives him a true Halloween look. It also adds a little bit of dignity and regality to him because he's got that silver fox thing going for him. Figured he was a little bit of an older orc with that beard and it being so big and bushy because, you know, orcs don't grow their own hair. They scalp it off of other people or take it from squigs. So that's what we're going for. And I'm really loving the look of this. But before we move off of the face, I do want to take care of a few other details like those baubles in his beard. And for that, I'm going to be using Iron Jaws Yellow. We'll be coming back to this color a couple of other points to add it variety to the piece and make it a little bit more cohesive. But for now, I'm really happy with where we're at. From a grizzled old face to an adorable squig face, we're going to be working on his squig parrot next. And for this, we're going with a classic squig color tone, which is red. I'm going with Blood Angels Red. I wanted something bright and sort of ketchup colored, and honestly, Blood Angel Angels is the best one for that. But you'll notice on the back of him, he's got some feathers because he's in fact, this orc captain's parrot. And I want those feathers to look a little bit more organic, a little bit fluffier. And to do that, I'm gonna wet blend a couple of other tones in there. I'm going to start with Griffhound Orange and then wet blend into that some Iron Jaws Yellow to create a really vibrant, bold look for his tail feather and the feathers he's got on his back. I've taken care of some of the major sections on the model. Let's focus on some of the smaller details next. I want to start with some of the metallics, specifically the ones that I want to be gold. And this is going to focus on some of the details on his jacket, as well as the beak on his squig. And for that, I'm going to be sticking with Iron Jaws Yellow. I just really like the look of this particular color. And I have a different yellow I'm going to be using on the epaulette later. And I think it's going to stand out really brilliantly against this. So once I have the yellow down, we can move on to his other shoulder, which has a little bit more armor on it. And for that, we're going to stick with a bit more of a neutral color tone. We're going to go first with Gorgrunt of Fur on the leathers. Then for the wood, we're going to switch over to Gargax Sewer, which is just a really nice brown wood tone with a terrible name. And then finally, we're going to Rattling Grime, which is going to be all the remaining metallics that we haven't already painted. I really like that I have two different gray tones to use with the contrast line now, because it means that I can differentiate my stone from my metallics super easily without having to put additional colors over top of them. And that just saves me a little bit of time, which is always very nice. After that, I want to move on to some of the organic details, and we're going to start with the mouths and wounds on my orc. We're going to stick with Vulpus Pink for this, and while I have been using Sigmund Burgundy recently, I wanted something that was a little bit brighter and a little bit more of a true pink color tone to help it stand out against all of the other vibrant color tones I have on this model. After that, I'm going to move on to 
Blood Angels Red because there's a couple of details that I want to pull out on the orc himself that will help unify the squig and have him not stand out too brightly by on his own. We're going to specifically do this on some of his rings and some of the details on his armor. And then the last thing that I need to take care of when it comes to the details is taking care of all the bones, skulls, and teeth that are all over this model. For that, I'm going to stick with Skeleton Horde because I wanted something that was a little bit warmer. I didn't want to have to layer it quite as much as I have been doing with Mortarian Grime recently because that is a very, very pale color tone. So Skeleton Horde it is. There aren't very many details left except for his hat and a couple of places on his jacket. So let's start with that Imperial looted jacket because I want to use Nasdrag yellow on the epaulette and all of the fabric details on there because I think it's a brilliant antique gold color tone, highly underrated and I don't use it enough, but honestly, I think I'm going to because the epaulette is genuinely my favorite thing about this model. But I don't wanna just gush about that because we have a couple other things to take care of. And next we're going to work on his hat because you might notice I haven't worked on that at all yet. The reason is, is because the dark oath flesh that I'm using as the leather tone on the hat is thin, takes a while to dry, and needed a couple of layers. So I did it in pieces, but after two layers of letting it just fully dry, it looks amazing. I'm very happy with it. It has a very worn leather look, and we can move on to the last details. We're going to use Basilicanum Gray for the sword that's sticking out of his hat, because I wanted to have it be stone, just like the weapon he was actually using. From there, we're going to move on to Reichland's Flesh Shade, because I wanted to put that into all of the Iron Jaws yellow pieces that I painted, knocking their color tone back a little bit and making them be a bit more gold so they match what I've got going on on the epaulette. Then we have the feathers to take care of. And I imagine what happened is he looted this Imperial jacket, then fought some Zinchian demons and went, oh my God, the feathers on those Zinchian demons match my jacket. I need them for my hat. So he plucked one of the blue ones from the demon and stuck it in his hat. But he wasn't satisfied with that and he saw some pink feathers on that demon as well. And so he plucked one of those as well. And now he has two glorious blue and pink feathers in his pirate hat, and with that, I am so pleased with how this model's turned out. Let's go ahead and talk about it. And here he is, my first ever painted bust. And frankly, I am so very pleased with him. I need to figure out exactly how I'm going to mount him because I don't have anything to really put him on quite yet, but that doesn't matter because the process and just painting this thing was so much fun. The slap chop method worked brilliantly as I expected, and it really enhanced a lot of the fine details that Cromlech put into their sculpt, which I really appreciate it because it just, it just makes the model look so much cooler. And I'm very, very happy with how he turned out. I was really concerned with actually approaching this particular piece because I've never worked on a bus before. It's always felt a little intimidating and I often see people approach it in a non-metallic metal sort of way. And I'm really not interested in that myself. So I wanted a different method to approach it with and to still get some really stunning highlights, shadows and mid-tones. And I think the slap chop method was the perfect answer. And I'm really glad that this is becoming a Vogue term and just thing that people are doing in the hobby because frankly, I think it looks stunning. It's been done for ages in the art field and seeing it apply to sculpture like miniatures just is brilliant. Plus it helps you get things done very, very quickly. While this bus did take me a couple of days to complete, that was mostly due to scale and not because of the complexity of the design or the colors that I was using. It took and, you about 10 hours. Yeah, I think it was, a, yeah, 10 hours. I guess I did it over two days, but it was really 10 hours of painting, which is not a whole lot of time when really, you really think about it. And I just, I'm so pleased with the results. Thank you to Cromlech for sending me the bust as an just something for me to paint because I've never done this before and it was just a super fun opportunity. So thank you very, very much. And before I head out, I do want to give a huge thank you to my patrons for making it so content like this can continue to happen. Without your guys' support, we just wouldn't be doing this. So thank you. I've been Angela and I hope you have a wonderful hobby night.